It's been a few years now since I've met this man. The one I told you about? The odd one, with a habit of getting himself into trouble. Life around him can be very strange, but I like it. We have a pretty good system worked out here. After spending months at a time with him, I realized that I still wanted to keep my job back home. I like it, and I don't want to leave it. So I go to work five days out of the week, and over the weekend he'll pick me up, and we'll go off adventuring for however long we like. And when I ask him, he brings me back to the end of the weekend, and I get ready for Monday morning. I'm happy with the setup. My life here and my life with him are both important to me. I could keep doing this for a long time. He's been away quite a while this time. It's been nearly six weeks since I last saw him. A little strange, but the doctor is a strange man. While I'm waiting, I'm having lunch and coffee with dad. It's been too long since I've been able to get out of London and see him. He misses you, and I do too. Love you, Mum. Coffee. Black as night. Just how you like it. Thank you. Oh, it's perfect. It's good to see you, love. It's been a while. Yeah. I don't really have an excuse. Work, life and all that. Well, you're here now. And I'm glad you came over today, actually. Mm -hmm. What do you mean? Eliza, it's been a long time since Mom passed away. Yeah, I know. I visited her today. Her birthday will be coming up soon. Uh, honey, I need to ask you something. Yes. Yes? My answer is yes. You don't even know. You and Karen have been dating a few years now, and you're going to ask me if I'm okay with you proposing to her. My answer is yes. Do you really mean it, sweetheart? I really do. Karen makes you so happy, and I love seeing you happy. And Mum would want you to be happy too. She'll always have a place here, in your heart and in mine. Thank you, sweetheart. Thank you. I'm going to see her tonight, actually. You can help me pick something to wear. And I can show you the ring I bought. Of course, whatever you need. I'll only have to be back later tonight. Before he left, the doctor told me something strange. He was telling me stories about ghosts in Pembry Forest, and the red skies of Elise 586C, and then he mentioned his dreams. The doctor doesn't really sleep. He rests sometimes, but I don't think he sleeps, not like human beings do. He said he was dreaming about his past. It was bothering him. I didn't really think anything of it at the time. But now, I wonder if he's alright. I told myself that I would ask him about it as soon as he came back. It's all I've had to keep from worrying about him since he's been gone for so long. It's funny. You would think one shouldn't have to worry about a time traveller being late. What time it is? It's time for me to explain why I've been away for so long. Six weeks! I'm even starting to worry a bit. You're right. I'm sorry. I know. Hey, you mentioned something about 
dreams the last time you were here. Is everything all right? Yes, yes. They were just visions of my past. It was nothing. Really? Really. They were just ghosts. Okay. Okay, how about this? Let's talk about your ghosts over lunch. Study chronon fields. The energy readings are the same as before. The reality is scarred, like kind of a healing process. If I had been here before, if I could find it, if he. Space-time event that traumatic would leave some kind of physical impression. If only I could find it. Are you talking to yourself? I thought you didn't believe in ghosts. I believe that people can leave impressions on places that they've been and people that they've met. I believe that dreams sleeping and waking, are reminders of those people, of those times. Ghosts are memories. The most persistent ones desperate to keep from being forgotten. What is it? Some sort of chronon trace. Who's there? Did you used to live here? Look, if you're here because of what he did, then I can promise you. you like to Who are you? Show yourself! Nicolette Ambridge. Oh, it's you. Look, I don't have time for the happy little reunion. I'm here on business. You don't really change with time, do you? Why fix what isn't broken? Now, if you'll excuse me, I happen to be tracking a chronon, chronon energy, energy trace. trace. How did you know? I got it too. I was starting to think it might have been you. I don't know what kind of readings you're getting, but mine say that this trace is just a little bit bigger than the output from my manipulator. Who are you? This doesn't make any sense. I had clear readings on my way here, and now everything's just... scrambled! Here, let me see. <laughs> no. You are not sonicking my manipulator. This replacement was expensive. Look, your readings are scrambled, and I can't pinpoint the location. Let's help each other. <laughs> More like me helping you, as usual. And what about that criminal AI you're carrying around? Ten is perfectly harmless. The computer overlord thing. Just a phase, now let me see. Just don't break it! A Cronin energy trace, that's like a fluctuation in time, right? That's the basic idea, yeah. 
And that's that, right? It can be. It's local. Very, very local. It's almost like we're on top of it. Show yourself. You know what this is. You know it's history. To keep the change, death, destruction. The power to make all your suffering undone. You can save her. Correct the paths I made. You can't be here. You can't! Choose! Take this totem. Go back and change everything. You know what you must do. You were both here. And... I tracked the anomaly through time. Your screwdriver picked up on its presence here. And we ended up in the exact same place. What are the odds of that? Astronomical. And we're right on top of whatever it is. Place. It's not a thing. It's a person. It's you. It's me. Beautiful, aren't they? A flaming balls of hydrogen. Is that all you see when you look at them? It's what they are. Keep looking. What do you see? Faces. Whose faces are they? My stars. Your stars. My family, friends, you. Shining. I like that. What do you see? I'll have to tell you some other time. If she's here, we'll find her. None of this should be happening. None of this should be happening! Understatement of the century. Don't. Did you see him too? He's here. But he can't be. Eliza! Eliza! Are you a human being? Oh, don't be afraid. I chose a random image from your mind. I can choose another if that would make you more comfortable. Uh, no. No, it, it's fine. 
I'm usually not this surprised. I've met a lot of strange things in my lifetime. But I do have to ask why you're here, though. I must speak to you. It is of the utmost importance. Wait! Please, don't go! You are alright, miss. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I just had a weird dream. Hmm. Uh, do you happen to know where we are? Honestly, not a clue. It feels weird, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it does. I should have some friends around here somewhere. We can ask them if they know what's going on. All I know is it has something to do with a Cronin energy trace. Hmm. Eliza! Oh, there's one now. Oh, I'm Eliza, by the way. Yeah, I heard. <laughs> yeah, I suppose you did. And you are? I'm the doctor. Eliza! Oh, I'm okay, I'm okay. I'm okay, really. See, I told you we'd find her. Sorry I dragged you into this. Hey, it's all part of the job. <laughs> You're here too. Too? You saw him. I know you did. I saw... someone. Something pulled me out of my time stream. Was it you lot? He doesn't know who you are. No, he doesn't. But he should be getting some kind of idea. This place, you can feel it. You know what's happened here. I can feel something about this place, but I have no clue who you are. Yes, you do. No, I don't. Yes, you do. You're just too stubborn to admit it. <sighs> oh, enough of this. You're both the doctor. This one is from the future, and the pretty face popping up in our collective consciousness is the one in between you two. See? Easy. Are you serious? This is me. My future? A discount Indiana Jones? Oi! Yep, and the other one. Oh, yeah. The ghostly James Bond reject. Fantastic. Oh, well, at least I'm not a toddler in a vest. Hi! Or, this vest was the couture on Callisto 2. <laughs> yeah, it was. Hey! What? what? Would you just shut up? Will someone please explain to me what's going on here? How did we even get to this place? There must have been some kind of event, something powerful that rippled along my timeline and dragged all of us here. Okay, but what is here? What is this place? And why is it so... unreal? There's something very... off-putting about it. Off-putting isn't the word. It's like... There are alarms going off in my head. It's wrong. Yeah, us non-time lords are gonna need a little bit more than that. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me dumb down the internal neurological dynamics of time lord biology for you. <laughs> if you were as smart as you think you are, you'd already have it explained to me. Sign of a place that's barely holding itself together. Fracture. Fracture? An event happens that's powerful and probably paradoxical, that the sheer force of it folds time and space into a fracture dimension, uh, an offshoot of normal space time. The event is so strong that normal reality can't handle it. So it, it takes people and objects and forces them into a destabilized 
pocket universe. It's like a cancer growing on the outside of the main universe. It's a, it's a tumor of malignant time. So the Cronin energy trace, it's an event. An event in your timeline that created this place? It's not a physical space. It's a projection layered on a non-physical dimensional nexus. It's a collective projection that we are using to understand the storm of temporal energies. Okay, I got most of that. So we imagined this forest. Projected it. Can I project anything? Well, I suppose you can. Did you... Did you just conjure up a mug of coffee? I've missed you. <laughs> you might not want to do that too much. This sort of thing can be taxing, even on Time Lord's minds. Something simple and well understood like a cup of coffee would not be too harmful, but things that are more complex could be severely damaging. In this place, it can take things from your subconsciousness. You need to be careful. I prefer the taste of the real stuff anyway. Okay, correct me if I'm wrong, and I'm not, but if this place is a cancer like you said, then that means it's bad for the main universe. So what effect is this fracture having? Currently, no effect at all. But the energies are building up to a breaking point and it'll flood the main universe, warping reality. It's a destabilizing dam that, if left unresolved, will break. So not good. Very not good. And all of this stuff ties back to you. You are the source of the trace. I don't know. It's, it's like something tried to subvert the events of my life. It wouldn't be the first time. Please. Maxis. Maxis? He tried to change my timeline. He did change my timeline. Who's Maxis? Oh, it's a long story. You'll have to live through it. I remember now. I was, I was tracking the changes he made to time. His meddling was creating wounds. His, his crude time mechanism was tearing holes in the skin of reality. Interventions. So you think he's responsible? No, he should be rotting away in prison somewhere. Why am I remembering this now? There was something there. Where? In the ruins. On a ruined world. Another presence in the wound. A, a false ghost. There's three of us. What? Actually, there's two. No, no. He's here, but not here. There's three of us. Why only three? We have lifetimes of faces. You were pulled backwards. I was pulled forwards. It's an isolated event. It centers on him. Something was there when I was him. Can you see it? I can't see it. Not yet. We were tricked. Okay. Game plan. We find this thing, stop it, and dissolve this fracture before it affects the real world. Nothing is ever that simple. True, but is that my fault? No. Is that your fault? Usually. Now, notice that my vortex manipulator is almost completely scrambled, but it does clear up a bit when I turn in this direction. So, the closer we get to the center, the more concentrated the dimensions are, right? And maybe the concentration reduces the interference? Anything? Well, yes, Mel, that's most likely the case. Great. You all can follow me to the center. If I've learned anything, it's that most bad guys like to be in the middle of everything. Yeah. I wasn't expecting to meet the old you. Or, I guess, the old, old you. Are you okay? No. I'm not. Hey, it's okay. I'm here. So is Nell. 
Yes, but two are the less prickly of the personalities. Oh, did he say? <laughs> You'll regret that. to this place being made of our collective subconscious? Well, if there is, we blissfully ignore it in favour of staying on task. Oh, okay. Just checking. You have to be careful with the subconscious, though. It can be a strange, uncharted land. I'm not scared. The only reality here is tangled and jumbled and full of annoying people. And Eliza. Aw, thanks, Nell. Anytime. Nell? It's nothing. I thought I saw something. Nell! Stay behind me. What do you see? You can't see that thing? There's nothing there. It's right in front of us. Stay back! I'm a government agent with a loaded gun. Moving is not your best idea. I'm warning you! What is it? What do you see? It's this scary men with their big teeth scraping at the walls. It's a projection of her subconscious. Something she's afraid of. It's not real. It's an image, a projection from your imagination. I thought, I thought I'd forgotten them. I can't. I can't. I can't. Yes. Yes, you can. You're Nell Ambridge, Base 65 Special Agent. You can do anything. Face our demons. You're not real. You're not real. You never were. I'm not a little girl anymore, and I am not afraid. Did you hear me? I am not afraid. take a minute to rest. Yeah, maybe we should. Are you okay? Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. You're lying. I'll give you a minute. Wait. It's part of my oldest childhood memories. <laughs> it's the scariest part of my life. I started waking up in the middle of the night, not able to move. And these things. It would stand at the end of my bed. These dark figures, these huge mouths, pointy teeth. I was terrified. Night terrors? Yeah. But I didn't know that. I was too scared to tell my parents. My kid brain thought the monsters would hurt me if I did. <laughs> I had endless nights. And then I just couldn't take it anymore. And I told my parents. <laughs> they took me to a specialist. One small procedure, and I never had them again. They can cure night terrors? <laughs> In the future, they can cure almost anything. 
I try to just forget about them. Use them for my benefit. I told myself that I would never let anything scare me like that again. I wanted to be fearless. But I'm not. Don't sell yourself short. Go brave and smart. Fear itself is not your enemy. In fact, I happen to think you have quite the powerful force of will, and that is very impressive. Thanks. You know, the doctor's right about this place. What do you mean? It's dangerous. It pulled those monsters from my deepest memories. Imagine what else it can bring. Yeah. Hey! You okay there? Yeah. Just a little dizzy. I shouldn't have messed around with that projection thing so much. <laughs> yeah. Well, if we're done here, we should get moving. This place is like a ticking bomb. <laughs> the faster we get you out of here, the better. <laughs> everyone. It's not like we're in a hurry, it's just the stability of the universe we're talking about here. Let's go. Hey, Earth the Doctor. Oh, I'm sorry. Are you talking to me or me? <laughs> Very funny. This all must be so strange for you. Meeting people all out of order, and various versions of yourself all at the same time? It's not like it hasn't happened before. <laughs> Happens a lot when you're a time traveler. Or a time lord. And when you're both, the numbers just skyrocket out of courtesy. Doctor? Tara? No, stop, it's not real. It's Tara! It's not, it's just like before, it's... It's a ghost, a memory pulled from the subconscious, it's not real. Time ripple backwards, along the event. She could be here! Look at her. She can't be real, it's an image haunting us. It could be her. Pulled here like the rest of us and disoriented from the shift. Tara Martin died. She died because of us, because of you! And what's this to you? Something distant in the past? Where is your hope? That could be her out there! No! So, he appears at last. The coward. You understand nothing. You're young and stupid. You never learned anything in your lifetime? Me? I was born grieving. I spent every waking moment with her image in my mind. Do you think I want to live in guilt and pain? Suffering caused by your... Your recklessness? My recklessness? Running around the universe, taking risks, and getting her killed. And that's it. She's dead and we do nothing. We're the doctor. We save people. You made our mistake. And now we have to live with it. With all the ones we lost. Looking back at them and regretting every breath we stole. Don't you think I know that? Am I supposed to end up a broken man who never took a risk in saving her? I have to live in that moment where she died in my arms. I was there. She was in my arms. She breathed her last breath, and this time shift pulled me out. The blood was fresh. If you hadn't caused the event, I could have saved her. You couldn't have. It was too late. And what about you? The one with the pretty girl and the laugh. Why are you here? I moved on. I had to. We have to. We can't. How can we? We do what we always have to do. Forget? Is that what it comes to? We just forget. Forget the consequence. Forget a beautiful life cut down by our mistake. That is not the future I want. You may have given up on her. Both of you. 
But I can't. I never will. Not for as long as these hearts beat. Don't do it. It's not real. What do you know? You're just some loudmouth stranger that has no idea what this is about. Okay. I'm gonna let that go because I can tell you for a fact Tara Martin is not standing over there. How do you know that? You didn't even know her. I buried her! What did you say? I buried Tara Martin. When my team raided the Tantra space on Yakarsis, we found the burnout shell of the compound and in the forest on the outskirts, we found the body of a civilian, a woman, dressed in strange clothes, shot through the abdomen. I figured she was one of yours. We buried her with the general's honors. I thought that would be fitting of someone with her rank. It's an echo, an echo of someone who has died, and it's sad, but time marches on. You three should know that better than anyone. We don't even bury her. I always meant to go back. But you forgot. Both of you did. Well, I won't. No matter what I may turn into, this doctor is more than loyal to his best friend. Trapped. Trapped? Seems like he's made his choice. You're not real. I, I wish you were. I won't stop trying to find her. But this isn't real. You're a reflection. A ghost. Don't take this away from her. She's too important. I'm not giving up. Doctor? Eliza, what is it? What is it? What's wrong? It's... it's like a knocking. A knocking? The garden. Garden? What about the garden? I was there. Somebody was in my memory garden. It was urgent. I was there before I came to this place. Can you get me there? Are you sure? Do you trust me? Of course. Then send me to the memory garden. Yes, I must apologize. I know this is very intrusive, but time is limited and my options are few. This is of the utmost importance. Who are you? Everything will be made clear to you very soon, I assure you. But first, I must ask you a question. Okay. May I scan your mind? What? Before I give you the message, I have to be sure that you are aware of some crucial details. Please, time is of the essence. So, you set yourself down in my memory garden, and then go and ask me if you can probe my mind? And you expect me to trust you? Yes. Okay, do it. But before I realize what I've said and regret everything, It is as I expected. You expected me to know things. There are traces of my prisoner in your garden. The effects that it could have had, I needed to confirm. Your prisoner? In your world, it was known as the Phantom. The Phantom? A creature wearing multiple images. Of a woman. A wife of an important man. An important man that's nothing more than just a projection another part of the Phantom's disguise. You met my prisoner, and it was defeated. There was a cost. 
Yes, the death of your friend. He seems all right now. He's just lucky like that. Please listen to me, Eliza. This place that you're in with the soldier and the threefold man, this is the work of the phantom. It is the power behind this fracture. How do you know that? I've been searching for the phantom for some time now, trying to recapture it. You said you're prisoner, like you were the warden or something. Yes, I am the warden. So, as the warden, you thought it would be a smart idea to just leave the phantom as a painting in some attic on Earth and then leave this ticking time bomb on the wall of some town theater. The prison was lost in transit. It slipped in between dimensions. We thought it would wander through the interdimensional aether and break down. It was forgotten. We did not know where it had gone, nor what influence it would have had. Actions like that have far-reaching consequences. You want me to trust you? After your mistake nearly cost me my world and one of my dearest friends. You must! We sent the phantom packing into the void! It has found a weak spot in reality. It, it's come back. And how do I know you're not the phantom or one of its little pets? All right. All right. Just let me show you the truth. This is of the utmost importance. I cannot enter this fracture on my own. Not yet. I need you. Please, let me show you. Okay. Fine. I'll let you show me. But remember this. The doctor is on my side, and that puts you in a very dangerous situation. I will not harm you, but this truth is not pleasant. What is it? What is it? What did you see? Who was in there? I saw... I saw everything. What? I... I, I need a... It wasn't Maxis. You were right. It was something that took his image. It was taken from your mind and worn like a disguise. It was the Phantom. The Phantom? What did you see? I saw all the same things you did all those years ago, back when we defeated it. All the crimes. Who is the Phantom? They come from another dimension, one completely separate from our own. The Phantom belongs to a race, one that shares a common power source. Yes, and it stole this power source and turned it back on its own people. It, it tried to destroy them. Survivors hunted it down and imprisoned it. And back on Earth, when we defeated it, it was banished into the void. But it's back. It came back through the weak spot that you found. Hold on. You said they. Are there more than one? The one who calls itself the Warden contacted me. It's trying to capture the Phantom and imprison it again. We can't just dissolve this fracture place. We have to help the Warden imprison the Phantom, or all of this will just keep happening. The event's going round in circles. This is bad. Very, very bad. The Phantom must be at the center of this, where it would feed the most energy. And we're running out of time. Yeah. What are you doing? He's here. I can feel it. Who? Space and time brought to this place. We are nothing alike. I never said we were, but we are connected. Did you think I only fed on the chaos of space and time? The chaos in your soul is as equally satisfying to my hunger. Truly a reunion of cosmic proportions. The reckless, the liar. broken, but all the same, 
the threefold threefold noun. Doctor? I'm sorry. You did this. You created this place. I did this? Me? I'm not the one that got her killed. You're the one who let a fake god tempt him into almost collapsing reality. We made this world. We have caused pain and suffering. Everything we've touched has been burned. We have to do this. Set things right. It's It's no no use. A window has been opened to your soul, Doctor. Such chaotic complexity. Such pain. How could you do this? How could you forget? How could you lie? What kind of man are you becoming? You are me. Can't you understand why I'm doing this? Tricked. That's what you said, isn't it? No trick. No temptation. I only offer what you've always wanted. I am the only honest being in this wretched universe. And now, I want to talk. We're not here to talk. This place is threatening the whole universe. We're here to destroy it. You do not want to fight. Good. We don't need to be enemies this time after all. What do you mean? For once, our interests align. You tried to destroy my world. You share nothing with the Doctor. Oh yes, the plucky sidekick. I remember you. The annoying tinny voice in the background of my defeat. How good to see you. There is nothing you could offer me. You are a destroyer, and I want no part of you. You're using images from my mind against me. Images. Images. Like this. You know what this says. All three of you. You can change all of it. Undo the suffering of those you care about most. Right the wrongs you have done to them. I hate you. You got her killed and I hate you. I loved you. You left me, but I loved you. I didn't have to hurt her. You did that yourself. (laughs) You were powerless. Rest in peace, little doctor. You were there. You were there and you didn't stop her. You let me die in your arms. All those mistakes. Undone. Tara Martin can be saved. No, she can't. Of course. How silly of me. I forgot an important detail. Tara Martin's death is a fixed point in your timeline. As you grieved and moved on... You, Doctor, created a fixed point around her. But she can be saved. How? No. You can't. Don't listen to it. You both might have given up on her, but I haven't. She was my family. What are you offering? A story. I've offered this to one of you already. I offer again. What is it? A second chance. For all of us. And the story? A troubled prince becoming a troubled king and starting down the path to madness that would rewrite time and bring another universe into existence. What other universe? Imagine a cosmos where the intrepid doctor with his many lives and faces, running around, saving lives, and regenerating as many times as his biology allows. And then imagine that one choice, one person's actions, changes everything. The doctor changes. He changes from an ill-tempered man with an aged face to an ill-tempered boy. The man with countless lives now with the face of a child. An alternate timeline. A divergence. How is this possible? Maxis was well-intentioned and good-natured. He made a mistake and sought to use time travel to undo it. But every time he ran his fist through the walls of time, he started to change. 
Maxis's clumsy meddling not only changed the universe, but rewrote his own story. He became a murderer, a tyrant, something to be feared. He forgot his original life, erased it from time, and embraced the new one. He created the universe that you have lived for three lives, Doctor. An alternate reality. What does that have to do with Terra? If you allow me access to your time stream, I can undo all that Maxis has done. This alternate universe, with all of its loss and suffering, will dissolve. Terra Martin will live. Kayla will have her childhood. And Eliza Douglas will never be hurt by you. And you. What do you get out of this? Everything comes with a cost. The dissolution of this universe will supply me with energy. I will be able to feed on all the undone years. A supply to last me eons. And Terra will be safe. A waitress on planet Earth. You understand as well. I hear no protest. You know your mistakes can be rectified. You can save those most dear to you. Isn't that the right thing to do? We have to stop them. We can't. What do you mean we can't? It's his fight, his demons. He has to do them by himself. What about all the good you've done? All the people, all the worlds you've saved, all of you. What about everyone who's died? The destruction. What about me? You've been hurt because of me. Choosing to keep you in my life is, it's selfish, it's unfair to everyone who can be rescued and especially to you. I know I sometimes terrify you. That isn't important to me. You are important to me! All of you, my stars. We can save them all. They can be alive again. because of you. You took me out of my boring world and showed me the colorful living universe. Undoing all of that, just so I could live as a waitress, would be killing me. You know that. I let you die. You tried to save me. You've been trying since you found yourself here. You hate yourself for what happened. Actions have consequences. And we have to live with them. But please, don't destroy me. Don't take away what we had. You were my family. My little brother. You always will be. I can't. I know you feel the need to earn forgiveness. I know you have suffered. I know you have tried to forget. Hitting reset isn't the way. She's right. You have saved so many. If you want forgiveness, you already have it. I already gave it before I died. You know that. You must break this world apart and set the fracture to right. Be a little reckless. You must choose to save her. If you don't, you will never see her again. Better to have lived and died than to never have lived at all. You would choose to leave her for dead for your own selfish reasons. He has already made the choice. No. We're still here. Whatever he believes about himself, he hasn't given in to you yet. 
He knows the right thing to do. I can't. You can't. We all can. We have to let it go. If you don't do this, you'll never be free of the pain! There are some people who know you better than you know yourself. But you know them too. Terra would never want this. Terra would never forgive me if I let someone like you win. This world is fragile, and it will break. Break the world. It was a message, my dreaming, a memory, a decision that I had to make. Dying here, create a paradox. Combine that with our regeneration energy. And we are powerful enough to break this world. No, you're making the wrong choice. No, I am making my own choice. We all are. For our stars. What do you see? Life. Life? My life. The one I've spent with you. What do we do now? Move on. Keep going. It's what you have to do. How? Forgive. Not only yourself. Bela too. She needs you. But she... No, she didn't. She tried to resist. The trigger was pulled. There's nothing you can do to change that. But you can move forward. Forgive her. Help her. For me. Do you think I'm strong enough? It's not strength I'm worried about. You have to choose. Once you do, the way ahead becomes clear. Saying goodbye to those we love, it comes in two parts. Accepting that they died, and celebrating that they lived. I miss you. I know. You'll always miss us. But don't forget to love our memories too. Yes, this totem will serve as a physical prison. This time, I'll make sure to take it to my home personally. Thank you for your help. No, thank you. Yes, thank you for everything you did, Tara. Those words that I gave to you, those truths about Tara Martin, they came from you. I told you nothing that you didn't already know. I can say that from your imprint of her, that she would have forgiven you, no matter what. She probably already did. This place will dissolve soon enough, and you all will be returned to where you came from. What about them? The time streams have crossed. As they untangle, the memory of this event will fade. Vague imprints may be left behind, but they will not remember what has occurred here. That's probably for the best. 
It's a bit cleaner if I don't remember meeting my future. As the most recent version, you'll retain things. I must return this to my home. Thank you, all of you, for your help. Peace be upon you. Hi. How are you doing? I don't know. Hey. I had the chance to save her. To end this... grieving. But you made a choice. All three of you did. I just hope it was the right one. I just... I want it to end. The future is a scary place. But I'll let you in on something. And what's that? One day, you're going to meet a young woman who's far too clever to see past her own nose. And she has a terrible habit of always trying to sound smart and getting herself all turned around. <laughs> and then? Well, you'll just have to live it to find out. You know, I really look forward to meeting you. Yeah, you're better. Go on, get up. Okay. I never got to do that to you. Well, I'm honored. Yeah, I'm sure you are. Okay, this place is breaking down. Paradoxes should be resolving themselves, and everything should stretch off. Did we make the right decision? Keeping our universe? Well, I don't know about you, but uh, I rather like living in it. And all the people that we've met. Yeah. Terra was amazing. And don't forget the others. Anna, Jennifer, Liv. Liv? Hey, she grew on you. More like a fungus, maybe. Oh, come on, admit it. There's no secrets here. I remember it well. Yeah, perhaps she was pretty great, too. The three of us made a pretty good team. Maybe we made some good choices after all. Besides, why can't there be a couple of alternate universes with Aris truly running around? And I'd much rather be me than whatever someone else would turn into. Well, that's one of us. Jealous. Of a vest? No, thank you. Sorry, boys. Looks like we'll have to argue another time. All right, you what? It's time to go. Take care of yourselves, both of you. <laughs> Try not to miss me too much. Oh, don't touch any weird paintings. What? You're welcome. Bye. work to do. Now that this anomaly is taken care of, I can get on to other assignments. Hi. Thank you. Really, thank you. Anytime, anytime. It takes a lot of guts to stand up to your demons. I might have a little bit more respect for you now. Times really do change. Take care. And 
look, she's gone. Like an afterimage. Hey, I have a question. Just one? Yeah. Was the Phantom connected to me too? I don't... I don't think so. Okay, that's strange because I'm pretty sure I saw my dad when the Phantom was changing its image. Eliza. D did you meet my dad? When? It looked like him when he was younger. Eliza, I... And he said... He said you didn't stop her. Was he talking about my mum? Eliza, I can explain. You met my dad when I was a little girl, didn't you? Yes. Did you meet my mum too? I never spoke to her, but I saw her. Why? Tell me. I wanted to understand. I wanted to do my very best for you. And then I met your father and I talked with him. You were there the night you drove away and never came back. You were there, weren't you? Yes. I didn't ask you to do that. Eliza, I... Stop repeating my name like it's going to save you. I never would have asked you to do that. I never expected that. I thought I could trust you. You go on and on about trust and choice and you violated both and didn't even have the decency to tell me. Go! Get away from me. I don't care if I ever see your stupid face again. You should have never done that. And you didn't even save her. Get out of here and never come back. months since I last saw the doctor. I've had a lot of time to think. The thing that worries me the most is that I haven't decided what I would think if I saw him again. There are some things that I wish I could take back, and others that I know are true. I would be lying if I said I had been fine since that day. I haven't been myself at all. I've been sleepless, depressed, irritable. My work has been lacking. Christy has noticed and bless her, she's trying to help. Honey, you haven't been yourself for weeks. Is there anything I can do? No. No, there's nothing really. I know what always makes me feel better. How about I buy you a drink and you can tell me about this rut you've been in? Yeah, sure. So, here I am, sitting by an untouched drink, trying to untangle the mess of how I feel. I wish you could tell me what to do, Mum. I miss you. It was a drunk driver, you know. I thought you didn't drink. I don't. Christy bought it for me. She left about an hour ago. I feel bad that she wasted her money on me. Eliza. No, wait. Me first. I can't say it's good to see you because I just don't know that. I am glad, though, that I can say what I've been meaning to say. I'm sorry. You're sorry? You didn't save my mum. You couldn't have. You didn't save your best friend, Tara. But I was so selfish as to expect you to defy time and save my mum. It was wrong. I, I know you would have loved to. You would love for Tara to be alive and for me to have my mum back. But events like those are fixed. They're integral. 
and tearing apart the universe would be far too great to risk. And it would change who we are and what has shaped us. I don't want that. Yeah. I'm sorry too. I never meant to hurt you. I. I wanted to see for myself. But that was selfish. Your dad, he needed someone to understand, and I shouldn't have gotten involved, but I couldn't help myself. I spent so much time being honest with you and earning your trust that I didn't think what I was doing to that trust by going back there. My dad says hi, by the way. Oh yeah? I asked him about you. I told him some stories. He's a little worried about me and what I've been up to. Well, he shouldn't be. I'm, I'm glad he is. It's nice to be cared about. I know that he does what he does because he cares about me. And I know that you do too. Actions have consequences. Even when those actions are well-intentioned. Walk me home. I'd love to. <laughs> you know, the TARDIS is just around the corner if you do. Doctor, I forgive you. I really do. I could never hate you. You mean too much to me. But I'm staying. Oh. Dad proposed to Karen. Christy and Mark were engaged only just last week. I have a life here. Not to say I didn't love my life with you, but I'm choosing to keep my feet on planet Earth. I understand. Doctor, I loved you. I don't know how or in what way, but I did and I still do. Here. It's a bag with trinkets from my adventures. I've been holding them for a while. You don't want to keep them? I have a few on my bookshelf already, and mm. I want you to have them. Why? Oh, you forgetful old man. Someday, hundreds, if not thousands of years from now, you're going to forget to me. But you'll always have this little bag of memories. Eliza Douglas, I could never forget you. Don't make promises you can't keep. Goodbye, Eliza. Goodbye, Tom. It's okay not to know how you feel. Maybe some parts of life are indefinable. Maybe that bittersweet part of saying goodbye is knowing how you feel. It can't always be put into words. How do I love my doctor? I couldn't tell you. But just be sure that I do. And I always will.
I've gotten shorter. It's time to move on. My doctor. This is rather peculiar. So, all of time and space, and you found it. <laughs> Clever old TARDIS. I've always been old, yet somehow I seem to keep getting older. I'm more tired. <laughs> I wish you could hear me, wherever you are. I wish you could hear me say this. But I remember. I remember all my friends. Every single one. Good memories, bad ones, dark ones. I remember more than I pretend. Yet somehow I'm forgetful. Maybe one day I'll understand how that works. Yeah. Maybe one day. But not like this. Not like me. Even I have to change. These names written here are all that I can take with me. <sighs> Whatever you may think of me now, I remember you. I always will. Like I promised. I remember everyone who leaves me. That's my choice. You have to choose to remember. next. 
that's all right. I know where I've come from. this divergence, and I am sworn to protect it with everything that's in me. Thank you, my stars, for shining. I am the forgetful man no longer. I remember. 